Hello, I'm Claire Lopez, Vice President for Research and Analysis at the Center for Security Policy. With me today is Fred Flights, a Senior Fellow at the Center. And today we're going to talk about the allegations that the CIA uh, has been spying on Congress, and specifically with regard to the allegations um, of the um, Enhanced Interrogation Program um, and the fact that the CIA is now being accused of having uh, spied on the uh, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence uh, that was looking at some of these documents, Fred. What, um, what can you tell us about this? This is really an explosive story that's been dominating the news media over the last few days. Uh, according to those who are making this claim, the CIA has been spying on the Senate, spying on senators, spying on Senate offices, monitoring Senate emails. Uh, but if you look at the facts of this case, that's not really what happened. Uh, what, what happened was that the CIA made CIA computers available to the Senate Intelligence Committee staff in a CIA building. These staffers removed classified documents without permission. The CIA decided to monitor these computers to find out how these documents left the CIA facility and went back to the Senate in violation of an agreement and probably the law. What I've been arguing for the center is that this was not illegal, but it was pretty stupid. It, it alienated the uh, agency's relationship with key senators, especially Senate Intelligence Committee Chairwoman Dianne Feinstein. Mm -hmm. Another issue that I think is even more concerned is that it's distracted from the extremely uh, partisan report that the committee is planning to put out on enhanced interrogation. So it, recently we saw the director of CIA, John Brennan, uh, apparently make uh, an admission and an apology um, about the CIA having uh, spied on, on, on the, the Senate. Um, is that trying to get out ahead of the story in a way? Well, Brennan apologized for acting inappropriately. He, he didn't say the CIA spied on the Senate. He did say the CIA's actions were inappropriate. He apologized for them. I think that apology was appropriate. This is not the way Maybe CIA could legally do this, but politically it was a dumb move. It cost mm -hmm. them a lot of uh, uh, influence at a time when they were in trouble on the Hill for, mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. What do we expect from the report once it is finally released? That's really the question here, because this scandal is distracting from an extremely partisan report. This is a report in 2014 that the Democratic members of the Senate Intelligence Committee have spent $50 million on to investigate a Bush administration program on enhanced interrogation. It was written entirely by the Democratic staff, and it's, it's over 6,200 pages. Surprise, surprise, it's going to say that they don't like this program, they think it amounts to torture, and that the Bush administration exaggerated its accomplishments. Would such a report, if it comes out and if it says pretty much what you, you say that it will say, will that have any uh, legal effect or any, uh, or is it more going to be of a policy effect? Well, I, I'm trying to figure out what effect this will have because, again, this is a report of a program that happened in another administration, a program that has really been inactive for 10 years. I, I think it's going to be ginned up to try to attack the last administration. But I just don't see how this is going to get traction with the American people. This happened quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is intended as a distraction from the Obama administration's other foreign policy problems. I, I don't understand the logic of putting out a report like this so, so at, at such a late date. Mm -hmm. One last question, maybe. Um, how do you think the relationship between the CIA now uh, and the Senate um, and in particular the SSCI, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, um, will recover from, from this uh, incident. What do, what do you think? The relationship was already in trouble because of the Snowden leaks. I think this was unfortunate. There were allegations that NSA and CIA were engaging in activities that were illegal, constituted spying on the American people. I don't think these allegations were accurate. But there were so many leaks by Snowden and there were so many inaccurate statements by politicians in the media that they sort of gained traction and, and you can't turn on the TV without another allegation that there's domestic spying by, by, the, by the U.S. government. So this, this scandal didn't come at a good time when we have so many reporters saying that the CIA is spying on the Senate. Uh, the Washington Post ran a story last week. The title was, Hill Computers Being Spied On by CIA. No. These were CIA computers being monitored by the CIA. 
from the Senate's perspective, I think it's it's really hurt uh, mm -hmm. their view of the agency, and it's cost the agency some key allies. But from the CIA's perspective and from the intelligence community's perspective, I think this is going to hurt the willingness of intelligence officers to cooperate with oversight. I mean, I was on the intelligence committee staff. You were in the intelligence community. We both know there's some wariness of Congress and the fact that there's political games played. We don't know what the members and staff were up to. Well, after this episode, with congressmen claiming the CIA spied on them, staffers stealing documents from the CIA, I think the relationship between the, exec the executive branch intelligence agencies and Congress is, is going to be in a lot of trouble. Well, this is a story that we're going to follow. Um, it is to be continued, and we will see what happens as uh, the report is eventually released and going forward between the Intelligence Committee uh, and, uh, and Congress. Thank you, Fred.